So our first speaker this morning is Dr. Rodney Graham. He's a consultant rheumatologist, the hypermobility unit in London, and affiliate professor in pathology of the School of Medicine at University of Washington in Seattle. Uh, he's got a number of uh, awards, and uh, he's an honorary professor at the University College London, honorary physician at the British Association of Perfor Performing Arts Medicine, Honorary Consultant in Rheumatology Northwest London uh, Trust. He's a commander of the Order of the British Empire on the Queen's Birthday Honors Awards for Services to Rheumatology and the Disability Living Allowance Advisory Board in 1998. Is that a knighthood, Rodney? No. Unfortunately, okay. Lifetime Achievement Award of the Earless Danlis Foundation here in America. International Excellence in Medicine Award, Chiari and Syringal Mylelia Foundation. He's written uh, at least uh, three books, um, Hypermobility of Joints, Hypermobility, Fibromyalgia, and Chronic Pain, and a book on hypermobility uh, syndrome recognition and management for uh, physiotherapists. And he's gonna give us a talk this morning on joint hypermobility syndrome and evolving multi-system disorder. Thank you very much uh, for the introduction. Uh, thank you very much for the invitation to come and um, address the Congress of Clinical Rheumatology. I should start by saying that I, unashamedly, I, I have been a clinical rheumatologist for the last 50 years, and I feel I'm amongst kindred spirits here. Um, so today I'm talking about um, the evolution of a syndrome, um, and it goes back 50 years. But fortunately, I was around at the time, so as I, I was I was able to follow it and, and watch it happen. It starts with two syndromes. I've got a mic here. I don't know if it's working. Um, can you hear me? Is the mic working? OK, I'll talk into this. Maybe it's a bit more effective. Okay, in 1967, the hypermobility syndrome was described by three rheumatologists working in the hospital in London, the Hammersmith Hospital, where I happened to be training as a rheumatology trainee. I wasn't involved in this work, but as I said, I was an observer from the sidelines. Eric Bywaters was the chief of rheumatology, my um, boss, um, and uh, sadly no longer with us. Now, one year later, and, and strangely, as it may appear, within eight miles of the hospital I was working with, uh, a colleague, a geneticist called Peter Baton, um, published uh, a, a classification of Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome. And he had been a pupil of a fellow under Victor McCusick, who I'm sure you all know is the father of modern medical genetics at Johns Hopkins. And this was the birth of the Ehlers-Danlos hypermobility type, or type three. Um, and these two syndromes have been um, growing together, you might say. Uh, as time's gone by and people have begun to study, the rheumatologists studying hypermobility syndrome, the geneticists studying Ehlers-Danlos syndrome, type three, uh, and unfortunately, hardly any communication between these two specialties or between these two groups. Uh, and it took 40 years to try and sort out what is the relationship between these two conditions. The hypermobility syndrome was simply defined as the occurrence of musculoskeletal symptoms in the presence of lax, generalized laxity of joints in otherwise normal subjects. Now the sting of this definition is in the tail because by implying that these were healthy individuals, I'm not sure that they actually meant that, but we can't ask them sadly what they precisely meant. But they certainly looked at the alternative, which was that these hypermobile subjects were not normal subjects at the, end, at the upper end of a spectrum of joint mobility in the population. But they, but they, that they might be um, showing manifestations of a connective tissue disorder. Uh, they 